Hey everybody, how's it going? My name's Andrew, and this is an AWS tutorial series on hardening your Elasticsearch setup for production use. In this tutorial series, we'll go over scaling out an Elasticsearch setup, as well as some simple configuration options you can set in order to make sure your production setup is more resilient. I've detailed out all of these steps in my GitHub repository, and we'll go ahead and reference that now. So the first thing we'll want to do is we'll want to set the field data cache. And on this, we're going to want to make sure that we only utilize 75%, which is a pretty safe value. And so basically what this means is we're going to limit the cache for sorting and aggregating of data. And the reason why we do this is because it's unbounded by default and you could potentially run out of JVM heap space. And so what we want to do for number two is we want to update the heap size. So on this, we're going to upgrade our heap size to no more than 50% of the available RAM on your system and no more than 31 gigs of RAM. Um, these are very safe values for Elasticsearch and they allow it to, um, to function properly. Now we also want to make sure we separate out our nodes and we're going to break this up into three parts. We have data nodes, client nodes, and master nodes. Data nodes are sort of our workhorse nodes, and these are the ones that are going to be holding all of our data. Client nodes act as sort of a load balancer to the cluster, and these are the ones that we're going to actually put inside of a load balancer, and they do all sorts of aggregating of results um, and fetching data. And master nodes, you can think about them as sort of the coordinator of the cluster. Um, it's recommended to have three nodes um, whose only job is to be a master. So as long as you have these split out, you're set up to scale pretty well. Now one thing we want to avoid inside of our cluster is what's called split brain. Now split brain happens when your cluster becomes unbalanced and uh, you're trying to elect a new master node and what happens is your data diverges and it can't be rejoining without killing half of your cluster. And so the way to set this up is you want to set your minimum master nodes to be a half of how many are available plus one. And so this way this will avoid the whole split brain problem and you should be safe. And so we also want to enable mlock all, which allows the JVM to lock on memory. And so this will uh, prevent the system from swapping memory, um, which could cause a huge performance hit. Another factor we want to take into consideration too, which I don't have in this tutorial, but it's just a good general rule of thumb, is to have an API layer to protect your data inside of Elasticsearch. So basically what I mean by this is if you're going to have Elasticsearch as a public facing production environment, you're gonna to wanna to have some sort of middleman in between your Elasticsearch layer and the public to handle all of the requests. This way no one has direct access to your Elasticsearch setup and could potentially do some damage. And you always wanna have um, some plugins installed that will allow you to monitor your Elasticsearch setup. And these are three plugins that I recommend that I really like and that I'll go over here in this tutorial. And my last suggestion would be to tag your nodes properly with names like client node one, two, or three, or data node one, just so it's easy to see what these nodes are when looking at your plugins. So let's go ahead and take a look at some plugins here. So the first one I'm gonna show you is the Elasticsearch head plugin. And you'll notice here with these data nodes that the data is only residing on those physical nodes themselves. And we have client nodes and we have our master nodes as well. Um, and Elasticsearch head is, is good to show you kind of where your shards are and uh, where, uh, where things are being allocated if there's reinitialization happening. Um, it's good to kind of see that a, as a whole there. So another plugin I like is Big Desk. Big Desk is cool because it gives you more of a um, system analysis of your Elasticsearch setup. And you can see this is the most important one that I'm always looking at is my JVM heap size. Um, and this is the one that you end up setting in that heap size setting. Um, and you'll always make that uh, you know greater than the default. Um, and you see OS level, processes, HTTP and transport and indices. There's a lot of data in here, a lot of good stuff to look at. Um, it's a plugin I really, really like. And you can look at each node in your cluster which is great too. And the last plugin I want to take a look at is KOPF. And this plugin is pretty cool. Um, if you jump over to the nodes tab, you can take a look at your nodes uh, based on what they are. So we can take a look at our master nodes, our client or our data nodes, just to make sure these are coming up in uh, their respective category, um, which is pretty nice. Um, you can see similar data, uh, just like big desk, um, you know, heap usage, disk usage, things like that. Um, and then if we take a look at our cluster, we can see our indices just like the head plugin. Um, we can see our special indices here, and just like the head plugin, we can see if they're reinitializing and, and what's happening with those as well. Um, the cool part about this plugin is under the More tab, they have some extra uh, settings here, which is great to perform different um, actions and a little GUI interface, which I, uh, I really, really like. 
So let's go ahead and take a look at one of these nodes that I have in the cluster. And I'm just going to show you one. I'm going to show you a data node. And you can imagine all the other nodes are pretty similar. Um, so if we log into this node and we sudo up. And so the first thing we want to do is we want to take a look at our Elasticsearch YAML file. And you'll notice here I have the similar settings that I've used in a previous tutorial on launching your first Elasticsearch setup. Uh, but now, since we're putting this for production use, I add a few more here. So I add the field data cache size, minimum discovery nodes, uh, mlock all I'm setting to true. And I'm also setting this one to a data node, and you'll see node master is false and node data is true. Um, so a couple extra little settings here that I'm using um, in order to make this server a little bit more resilient for production use. And now the other file that I want to show you is I want to show you the sysconfig Elasticsearch. And inside here, there's some global variables you can set. Um, and one of these global variables is the Elasticsearch heap size. Um, and this is the one that you're going to want to set to 50% of the available RAM and no more than 31 gigs. And by default, it's 256 megs, as we saw in the Big Desk plugin. Um, and so you'll set this to 50% of your available RAM and you should be good to go. Now, I also want to show you that I can put some data into Logstash still here. And if we echo hello world into a Logstash file, I showed you how to set up Logstash previously in another tutorial, which I'll link below. You'll notice in Kibana when we refresh it that we have some data inside and this data is being stored inside of our data nodes. So if we click refresh, we'll see Logstash has six docs and it's inside of our data nodes and not in our client or our master nodes. And the other thing I want to show you is the load balancer. And you'll notice here in instances, I'm only putting my client nodes in. I don't need to put in my master or my data. All I need to do is put in my client nodes and those should act as the load balancer to the Elasticsearch cluster. And so that concludes our tutorial on hardening Elasticsearch for production use. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the comments section below. And please remember to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.